linear equations and graphs, Algebra 1 EOI review. In the breakdown of um, the questions that are going to be asked on the Algebra 1 EOI, this lesson is over relations and functions, Standard 2, um, Objective 2, which is over linear equations and graphs. When you look at the ideal number of items column, um, this objective kind of sticks out because this objective by itself, linear equations and graphs, has just as many, um, if not more, than the other two standards. And so this one objective, linear equations and graphs, is going to be really important that you understand before you go take this test. Of the 31 questions for relations and functions, 15 of them are going to be over linear equations and graphs. It's going to account for almost a quarter of your test. This first example says when given, or this first thing we need to talk about is when you're given an equation and ordered pairs, plug in x values and see which x value has the corresponding y value in the ordered pair. Remember an ordered pair is in parentheses and it gives you an x and y value separated by a comma. So x value comes first, comma, then your y value. This first example says which ordered pair is a solution to the equation y equals 2x minus 1. Then we're given four different ordered pairs for a, b, c, and d. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug in the x value that they give us and see if the outcome or the y value is what we want it to be. So let's look at a first. A gives us the ordered pair negative 2, 5, which means when I plug in negative 2 for x, I want to get 5 for my answer or for my outcome, y. So let's do that. When I plug in negative 2, I have 2 times negative 2 minus 1. Well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. I wanted my outcome to be a positive 5, so A the ordered pair negative 2, 5 is not a solution to this equation. Let's go ahead and try B now. They give me the ordered pair 1, negative 3. 1 would be the x value. Negative 3 would be what I want to get for my outcome or for my y value. So go ahead and plug it in. We have 2 times a positive 1 minus 1. Well, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. I wanted a negative 3 to be my outcome for this ordered pair to be a solution, so this is not a solution to the equation. Next, we're going to try C, 2, negative 5. Go ahead and plug in 2 for x. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. I needed my outcome to be a negative 5 for this ordered pair to be a solution, so C is not my answer. D is the only choice left, but I still need to go ahead and plug in the ordered pair to make sure that I didn't make a mistake on A, B, or C. Um, this will prevent you from answering a question wrong based on simple multiplication or addition or subtraction errors. So go ahead and plug in negative 1 for x. We want our outcome to be um, negative 3, and when we plug it in, we have 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, minus 1 is negative 3, so D is my answer. This next um, thing we need to talk about says, remember to solve, e solve equations, you need to use inverse operations. Inverse operations, or opposite operations, the opposite of addition is subtraction and vice versa. So the opposite of addition is subtraction, the opposite of subtraction is addition. They undo each other, that's why they're called inverse operations. And multiplication and division are inverse operations of each other as well. This example says what value of x is a solution to this equation? The equation given to us is 2x minus 5 equals 7. I need to go ahead and get rid of addition or subtraction first, so, which means I need to add 5 to both sides. When I add 5 to both sides, I get 2x equals 12. Go ahead and divide both sides by 2, and when you do this, you get 12 divided by 2 is 6. To make sure that you have your answer correct, 
something that would be worthwhile, especially while taking your test, is to just go ahead and you can mentally plug in 6 back into the equation. So when you plug it in, you would do 2 times 6 is 12, 12 minus 5 is 7. And I've just gone ahead and double checked my answer to make sure that I'm happy and that it is the solution to this equation. Um, it would be really unfortunate to miss a problem like this, which is just a two-step equation, which we've been solving for quite a while um, just because of a simple error. The next example says the equation below represents the cost y of a large pizza with different number of toppings x. It tells us y equals 10.25 plus 1.25x. Before tax, Carla paid $19 for a large pizza. How many toppings were on Carla's pizza? It tells us how much the total cost of the pizza was, 19, and they've already defined my variables for me in the first sentence, which says that represents the cost y of a large pizza. So I need to plug in 19 for y for this equation. So I have 19 equals 10.25 plus 1.25x. I need to solve for x to find the number of toppings on the pizza. I'm going to do this by using inverse operations. First thing I need to do is subtract 10.25 from both sides, which gives me 8.75 equals 1.25x. Go ahead and divide both sides by 1.25 and you get 7. Um, one of the reasons why I can go through this so quickly is because on the Algebra 1 EOI, you will have calculator use, so um, you will be able to use your calculator to just plug these in and find these numbers pretty easily and quickly. The next example says the profit P of an ice cream store makes, it, makes in one day when producing X gallons of ice cream is given by the equation P equals 60X minus 420. For what value of X is the store's profit equal to zero? Well, profit is represented by the variable p in this equation, and because I want it to equal 0, I need to go ahead and plug 0 in for p. Again, I'm just going to use inverse operations. I need to add 420 to both sides, which gives me 420 equals 60x. Go ahead and divide both sides by 60, and you get c7. The next example said Brad, says Brad graduated from college and started a, a new job. This table shows his yearly salary, y, for each year, x, for the next four years. If Brad's salary continues to increase at the same rate, what will be his salary for the seventh year at his job? Well, we know that this table shows his yearly salary and it's showing consecutive years. So the first year he makes $36,500, the second $38,600, the third $40,700, and the fourth $42,800. What we need to do is figure out how much more he's making each year. Well, going down the Y column, to go from 36,500 to 38,600, you're going to add 2,011 dollars, or I'm sorry, 2,100 dollars each time. When you do that, um, that pattern continues and is constant throughout the first four years, and it says that it's going to continue to in increase at the same rate. So each year he's going to make 2,100 dollars more than the previous year. After the fourth year, he has $42,800 salary. Well, to figure out the seventh year, that would be three more years of the same increase. So we can do three times 2,100, which would give us 6,300 more dollars than what he had in year four. So take the year four salary, $42,800, plus three more year, years worth of increase, which would be $6,300, and add them together, and you get C, $49,100. The next example said, t says Tina will set up chairs C for a concert. She will set up 20% more chairs than the number of tickets T sold. There were 130 tickets sold. How many chairs will Tina set up? Well, this problem tells us that Tina's going to set up 130 chairs plus whatever 20% of 130 is. We've talked about this in a previous lesson, and remember, percent means out of 100. So we need to figure out 
x over 130 equals 20 over 100. 20 over 100 represents 20 percent. x would be whatever 20 percent of the whole 130 tickets sold is. To solve this proportion, I can cross multiply and get 100x equals 2,600. Go ahead and divide both sides by 100. And you get, um, you fi figure out that she's going to set up two, uh, 26 extra chairs. So she's going to set up 130 chairs for the number of tickets sold plus 20% more, which is 26 chairs. 130 plus 26 is 156 chairs. D. Slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. m, remember, is the slope and B is the y-intercept. This example says which graph represents the function y equals 1. Well, when we have y equals 1, that means that our slope is 0 and our y-intercept is 1. So we need to figure out which one of these graphs has a y-intercept of 1 on the y-axis. Well, A intercepts the x-axis at 1, so that can't be our answer. B represents the x-axis at negative 1, so that's not going to be our answer. C has a y-intercept of 1, and it also has a slope of 0. Because the rise would be 0, I would have 0 over any divided by some number, and 0 divided by anything is 0. This next example says what happens to the y-intercept of y equals x when the function changes to y equals x plus 4. So to go from the equation y equals x, which would have a y-intercept of 0, to the function y equals x plus 4, which would have a y-intercept of 4, I know that the y-intercept changes from 0 to 4. The next example says what happens to the slope and y-intercept of y equals x when the equation changes to y equals 2x minus 6. If you notice, the slope is now 2 and the y-intercept is now negative 6. The choice that says that is C. The slope changes to 2 and the y-intercept changes to negative 6. Changes to absolute value graphs. When you add a positive to the outside of an absolute value, it shifts the graph up whatever number you're adding. When you subtract a number from the outside of the absolute value, it's going to shift the graph down whatever the value is. When you add a positive to the inside of the absolute value, it's going to do the opposite of what you think. It's actually going to shift the graph to the left that number of spaces. And when you subtract a number on the inside of the absolute value, it is going to shift the graph right, that number of spaces. Because the absolute value turns a negative into a positive and a, um, keeps a positive the same, it's going to actually do the opposite of what you would think when, the abs when you're adding or subtracting on the inside of the absolute value symbol. This example says what happens to the graph of y equals the absolute value of x when the equation changes to y equals the absolute value of x plus 4 on the outside of the absolute value symbol. When we're adding to the, on, to the outside of the absolute value symbol, we know that the graph is going to shift up 4 units. The next example says what happens to the graph of y equals absolute value of x when the equation changes to y equals the absolute value of x minus 2 all inside of the absolute value symbol. Because we're subtracting on the inside, we know that the movement is going to be to the left or to the right. And because we are subtracting, we know that inside of the absolute value symbol, subtracting moves the graph to the right. And in this case, 2 units because I am subtracting 2. Remember that slope is rise over run. For a positive slope, you can move up and to the right, so you could count the rise up and then the run to the right, or you could also count down and to the left. When you count down and to the left, that would be like a negative over a negative, which remember a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Now for a negative slope, you can move down and right, down would be a negative movement and right would be a positive 
a negative divided by a positive would be a negative for a negative slope. Or you can move up and to the left. Up would be a positive motion, left would be a negative motion. A positive divided by a negative is a negative to give you a negative slope. This example says which graph represents the, a line with a slope of three. The first thing we can do is we can go ahead and actually eliminate two of these answers. We know this line is going to have a positive slope, so it's going to be ascending, or as we look at the graph from left to right, the graph, the line should be moving up. So as you look at A, as you go from left to right, the line is going up or increasing. B, as you go from left to right, is also increasing. But if you look at C, as you go from left to right, you would be going down or the line would be going down. So C could not be my answer because it would have a negative slope or descending slope. And D also has a descending slope. Automatically, I've eliminated two of my choices without even having to count or look at anything besides if it, the graph is increasing or decreasing. Now I need to count the slope of the lines. Go ahead and choose two points, two whole number ordered pairs on the graph. For A, I've chosen these two red points. And go ahead and count rise, in this case I would go up three, over run, in this case I would go to the right three. Rise over run would be positive 3 over 1 or just 3. That is the slope that I'm looking for, so I do know that A is my answer. I'm going to go ahead and count another slope just so that you can see it again. For B, go ahead and just like before, choose two whole number ordered pairs. Now it doesn't matter which two you choose. These two are just the ones that I saw first. Go ahead and count this slope. Count rise over run. I'm going to go from the left to the right. So I'm going to go up one and to the right three, which would mean rise would be one over three. So I know B is not my answer. A is my answer. It has a slope of positive three. The next example says, what is the slope of this graphed line? Go ahead and just like with before, um, choose your points. This time I looked at my answers first. This line would have a descending slope or a negative slope, so I can eliminate C and D. And again, now I've narrowed it down to two choices, and I have a 50-50 shot of getting it correct. Now I'm going to plot two points. Again, you can choose any two points. Just make sure if you don't choose two points that are consecutive whole number ordered pairs or whole number ordered pairs right next to each other, make sure that you remember you can simplify a slope or a ratio always. So if you got something like 2 over 6, well, 2 and 6 both have a common factor of 2, so you could simplify it to 1 over 3. Now, if you look at this, I'm going to count from the left and to the right, so I'm going to go down 1, which would be a negative 1, and to the right 3, which would be a positive 1. So my rise over my run would be a negative 1 over 3, so my answer is B. To find the slope between two ordered pairs, you're going to use the formula y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. What the sub 2's and the sub 1's tell you is that the first x and y have to come from the same ordered pair just as the second x and y have to come from the same ordered pair. So order does matter here. You need to make sure that whatever y value you start with on top, you use the corresponding x value first on the bottom. This example that we can use this formula on says, what is the slope of the line that passes through the points negative 5, 2, and 3, uh, 2, negative, 2, 3, I'm sorry. Now, remember, ordered pair, you have x comma y. It does not matter here. You can do the exact um, opposite or have the exact exact opposite order as me as I do on the top and the bottom. As long as both of them are flipped, you should get the same answer as me. I chose to plug it in as 2 minus 3. Those would be, that would be my y value from negative 5, 2 and my y value from 2, 3, and I'm subtracting them, over negative 5 minus 2. Now the other option you could have would be 3 minus 2 over 2 minus negative 5. 
you'll get the same answer either way. When I do this, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and negative 5 minus 2 is going to give me negative 7. So I have negative 1 over negative 7. Well, a negative divided by a negative is the same as a positive. So negative 1 over negative 7 can also be written as a positive 1 over a positive 7, so my answer is A. To find the slope from a table, find a pattern in the x values and a pattern in the y values. Then put the change in y over the change in x. If you look at this table, I've gone ahead and the x pattern um, would be a positive 2. You're adding 2 each time you go down the, the table. The pattern for the y's as I move down, I will actually be adding 12 each time. What I need to do now is write a ratio of the change in y over the change in x, which will be a positive 12 over a positive 2. Well, 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6, so my answer is D. It says to get the slope from an equation, it has to be in slope-intercept form. So the first step should always be to get y by itself. If you're looking at an equation and y is not by itself, you're not going to be able to just look at the equation and tell me the slope with the exception of point-slope form. But point-slope form, a lot of people have a problem memorizing it, so I would tell you to stay away unless you absolutely 100% sure that you have memorized point-slope form. I would tell you go ahead and solve for y. That is a for sure way to know that you have the equation in slope-intercept form and know that the slope is whatever is being multiplied by x. So there is another way technically. However, I would say always err on the um, side of caution and just go ahead and solve for y, put the equation in slope-intercept form or y equals mx plus b form. The first step to solve this equation for y would be to go ahead and add 2x to both sides. When I add 2x to both sides, I get 3y equals 2x minus 6. Now I need to divide both sides by 3. Really quickly, something I want to point out is whenever you divide both sides by 3, you have to divide everything on both sides by 3. So I can't just divide 2x by 3, I also have to divide 6 by 3 as well. So my 3's cancel out on my side with y. Well, 2x divided by 3 is just going to give me 2 over 3x, and negative 6 divided by 3 gives me negative 2. This equation, or this question just asks me to find the slope. The slope is what's being multiplied by x, so in this case, my answer is C, positive 2 over 3. Which equation represents a horizontal line? A horizontal line is going to be parallel to the x-axis and have a slope of 0, which means that I can automatically eliminate A and D. I can also eliminate B because anytime I have x equals, it's going to cross the x-axis at that point. And a horizontal line, unless it is the x-axis, is never going to cross the x-axis. If you think about a line that's crossing the y-axis at 5 and has a slope of 0, it's going to be horizontal through the y-axis at 5. This next example says, or this next statement says, for two lines to be parallel, the slopes have to be the same and they have to have different y-intercepts. If they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, it's going to be the graph of the line just graphed on top of itself. The next statement says, for two lines to be perpendicular, the slopes have to be negative reciprocals. A really quick refresher of negative reciprocals. If you had a slope of 2 over 5, negative means that if it's positive, it's going to become negative. If it's negative, it's going to become positive. So because 2 over 5 is positive, my, the perpendicular slope to 2 over 5 is going to be negative, and reciprocal means you're going to flip the numerator and denominator, the um, top and bottom numbers of this ratio. So my negative reciprocal of positive 2 over 5 is a negative 5 over 2. And another refresher, if you just had negative 3, remember any whole number can be written over 1. So this would be the same as negative 3 over 1. 
So when you take the negative reciprocal, it's going to become a positive 1 over 3. This example says, what is the slope of the line perpendicular to y equals 2x plus 3? Well, this is already in slope-intercept form. I know that the slope of this line is positive 2, so a line perpendicular to a line that has a slope of positive 2 would have a slope of the negative reciprocal, which would be negative 1 over 2. This next example says which equation represents a line parallel to the line y equals negative 1 over 3 x minus 2. Well, a line parallel has to have the exact same slope as this line, and this um, equation is already in slope-intercept form again, which is very nice. I know the slope is negative 1 over 3, so I know the slope of the line parallel has to be negative 1 over 3. The only answer that has a slope of negative 1 over 3 is A. This next example says which statement is true about these equations. The two equations are y equals negative 2x plus 5 and y equals 1 over 2x plus 2. Notice the slope of the first line is negative 2. The slope of the second line is 1 over 2. They're definitely not going to be parallel lines because um, they do not have the same slope but they are going to be perpendicular lines because they negative 2 and positive 1 over 2 are negative reciprocals of each other. This next example says which statement describes the line that contains the points negative 3, 4 and negative 3, 5? Something that you could do, and you will have graph paper on your EOI, is you could just plot these points, draw a line, and describe it. That would be very easy to do. Um, I went ahead and I used the slope formula to find the slope between these two lines. So I did 4 minus 5 over negative 3 minus negative 3. Well, 4 minus 5 is negative 1, and negative 3 minus a negative 3 is going to give me 0. Remember, you cannot divide anything by 0. Um, when you are trying to divide something by 0, it's going to be undefined. And an undefined slope means that you have a vertical line. So like I said, just as easy, probably easier, just to graph these points. I just went ahead and showed you how you could do it by finding the slope. This next example says which equation represents a line that is perpendicular to the graphed line. The first thing we need to do to find um, a line, an equation of a line that is perpendicular is know the slope of the line that I'm looking at right now. They've already given me two points on this line, P and Q, and I'm just going to count rise over run. My rise to go from P to Q would be go up 2, so positive 2, and to the right 1, so positive 1. So the slope of this line is going to be positive 2 over 1 or just 2. The slope of a line perpendicular to a line with a slope of 2 would be at the negative reciprocal, which will be negative 1 over 2. So my answer is A. This next example says the graph shows the hours worked and total pay for Paul's part-time job. Look at the graph. Um, observe the graph for a minute. It says Paul's job. Uh, the x-axis tells us hours worked. The y-axis tells us total pay in dollars. What does the slope of the graph represent? Well, the slope of the graph tells us, um, if you just look at your answers, A says hourly pay, B says days worked. Um, nowhere on this graph does it say anything about days worked, so B wouldn't make sense. It's talking about hours worked and total pay. Um, B is definitely out. C says hours worked. Um, hours worked is only the x-axis, so that's not going to be the slope. And then money earned. Money earned would be the y-axis. That's not the slope. So my best answer choice here is hourly pay A. This next example says the table shows how much Donna charges for doing yard work. She charges a fixed fee plus an hourly rate. Donna's yard service it tells us hours worked and the amount she charges. It asks us what is Donna's hourly rate. If you look at this table, notice that each column is increasing by the hours worked um, by one hour worked each time. So each additional hour that she works, she charges six more dollars, which tells us that she's charging six dollars per hour. 
The next example says the table shows delivery service charges according to the number of miles traveled to make uh, the delivery. So we have delivery service charges, miles traveled, and charge. What does the slope of the linear relationship of the table represent? A says the ratio of the amount charged to miles traveled. B says the ratio of the miles traveled to the amount charged. C says the ratio of the change in miles traveled to the change in the amount charged. And D says the ratio of the change in the amount charged to the change in the miles traveled. Um, some key words here that only appear in answers C and D are the change. Um, remember, we, when we talk about slope, we're talking about the change in Y over the change in X. So I can go ahead and eliminate A and B. They're just talking about ratios, which um, don't let that throw you off. Um, C is talking about ratios also, but slope is talking about a change in two things. Now when we look at C and D, it says the ratio in the change of miles traveled to the change in the amount charged. So change in miles over change in charge would not be the correct slope. My answer here is going to be D. It's going to represent the change in the amount charged because that is the um, in, uh, dependent variable and then independent variable would be the miles traveled. So my answer here is D. The next example says, Tom de Todd deposited $200 in his account. The graph shows that how the money in his account will increase over the next 10 years. Todd's account, um, the y-axis tells us the amount in dollars, the x-axis tells us the number of years, and then the line is showing how it's going to increase. The question they ask us is, what does the y-intercept of this graph represent? Well, the y-intercept is intersecting at 200. Um, and notice that the number of years there would be zero. So that's going to be what he starts with. It even says, Todd deposited $200 in his account. That's the first sentence of this question. Um, A says the rate of interest. Um, the, where it crosses the y-axis has nothing to do with where it's going to go. B says the increase per year. Again, um, it's not showing any increase, just the y-intercept is just showing where it started. C says the amount of money earned, and D says the original amount deposited. The only answer that makes sense here is D. $200 is what he started with. That's how much he deposited initially. It's how much was there on the y-axis when time was zero. This example says an oil tank contained 100 gallons of oil when Paul starts to fill it. Paul pumps oil at a rate of 20 gallons per minute. The graph shows the number of minutes Paul pumps oil into the tank for the amount and the amount of oil in gallons in the tank. So oil in the oil tank, amount of oil in gallons is the y-axis, number of minutes is the x-axis. Based on the graph, which statement is true? A says the slope of line PQ is 20. B says the slope of line PQ is 100. C says the value of Y at point P is 20. And D says the value of Y at point Q is 100. The only answer that makes sense here is A. We know that he, the um, pump, the gas pump, oil pump, pumps oil at a rate of 20 gallons per minute, which would be the ratio or how um, the change in how many gallons per minute would be the slope. Um, the reason why B doesn't work is 100 is how much he's starting with. So B doesn't make sense. The slope of PQ is not 100. Um, C says the value of Y at point P, which is on the Y axis, is 20. Well, it tells us that he started with 100 gallons, so starting at 20 wouldn't make sense. And D says the value at point Y, the value of Y at point Q is 100. Well, Q is the ending amount of oil in the tank, so um, we know he started with 100. If he's put more oil in, he definitely isn't ending at the same point where he started. So the only answer that makes sense is A. 
This example says which graph represents a line with a y-intercept of negative 4 and a slope of 3. Immediately, I can eliminate two of my answer choices because a y-intercept of negative 4 is only seen in graphs A and C. So um, B and D are immediately eliminated, and then you can count the slope of the other lines. The only one with a slope of 3 is graph A that has a the only one remaining between A and C that has a slope of 3 is A. This example says what is the equation of a line that has a slope of negative 5 and passes through the y-axis at 2? So a slope of 5 of negative 5 um, can eliminate C and D, they're not in slope intercept form, and passes through the y-axis at 2 means that it's going to have a y-intercept at 2, so my answer is B, y equals negative 5x plus 2. Point slope form, which we talked about a little bit earlier, um, is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. m is slope. y sub 1 and, y, and x sub 1 are representing points um, on the line. So this question says, what is the equation of a line with a slope of negative 2 that passes through points, the point for negative 3? You can eliminate A and B immediately because they don't have slopes of negative 2, which it tells us outright that the slope is negative 2. My best answer choice here is going to be D because if you look at the points that they use, the um, values that they plug in for C, they've plugged in X for Y and Y for X. They flipped flop, flip flopped them where they were supposed to be plugged in. So my answer here is D. This, uh, this says when given a table, you can find the pattern and write an equation, or you can substitute the x and y values into the equations and see which one works for all x and y combinations. If you look at this table for x and y, when x is 10, y is 60. When x is 20, y is 120. When x is 30, y is 180. And when x is 40, y is 240. If you look at these choices, it says what is the equation of the line passes through the points in this table. Um, A, we have y equals 6x. So go ahead and just plug in x and see if you, plug in each x and see if you get the correct y value. So when you plug in 10, 10 times 6 is 60. Well, that's what we needed y to be. So A is looking good. I just need to um, try it a couple more times to make sure it's going to work for all of the points. So go ahead and plug in the next x value, 20. Well, 6 times 20 is 120. Again, that's what we needed it to be. I'm going to try one more just to make sure. Um, plug in 30. 6 times 30 is 180. That's what we wanted again. You can go ahead and plug in 40 if you want to. I think that's enough to know that A is going to be my answer. The next example says when given a point and slope, start by plotting the ordered pair and then counting the slope from that ordered pair. So this example says which graph represents a line with a slope of negative 2 that passes through the point negative 1, 2. The first thing I can do is eliminate answer choices that um, the answer choice that has a positive slope because I know my slope is going to be negative. So eliminate that choice first. D is out. It has a positive slope. Now I can look and see which graphs point, uh, go through the point negative 1, 2. A has a goes through the the, a, the line in ant, graph A does go through the point negative one two. The line in graph B, however, does not, so B is eliminated. And then the graph in line C also goes through the point negative one two. From there, you can count the slope. The slope of negative two means that it would go down two and to the right one. The only one that um, does that is graph A. Graph C where you would go down one and to the right two, it would have a slope of negative one over two. This question says, what is the equation of the graphed line? We know this line has a y-intercept at negative five, and all of my answer choices are in slope-intercept form. So I can Im immediately eliminate a and b because they have a y-intercept at positive five. From there, I need to go ahead and count my slope. To count my slope from these two points, I would need to go up 5 and to the right 4, so my slope would be a positive 5 over 4. 
the only answer choice that has a slope of positive 5 over positive 4 and a y-intercept of negative 5 is d. To write an equation given two points, first you need to find the slope. Then, use one of the points to plug in the x and y as well as the slope m values um, into y equals mx plus b. Finally, you're going to solve for b, plug in the m and b, and you have an equation, have the equation of the line. We're going to do uh, several examples of this here in just a second. This first example says, what is, the, what is the function of the line that contains the points 10, negative 2, and 20, negative 12? The first step I need to do is go ahead and find the slope. Remember, I can do y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. When I do that in this equation, I plugged it in as negative 2 minus negative 12 over 10 minus 20. Well, negative 2 minus negative 12 is going to give me a positive 10 and 10 minus 20 gives me a negative 10. So I have 10 divided by negative 10, which is the same as a negative 1. Immediately, I can eliminate a and c. They both have a slope of, those functions both have a slope of positive 1, and I know this line is going to have a slope of negative 1. Now what I'm going to do, and you, here, the, th the, the next step, is I'm going to plug in the slope that I found. I'm going to have y equals negative 1x plus b. I don't know what my y-intercept is right now. Now, this is a point where you can choose either point that they've given you. You can choose to plug in 10 for x and negative 2 for y, or you can choose to plug in 20 for x and negative 12 for y, but you can't mix them up, meaning like I couldn't plug in the x value from one of my ordered pairs and the y value from the other. They have to be the values from one of the ordered pairs given. I chose to go ahead and just use 10 and negative 2. So I plugged it in and said negative 2 equals negative 1 times 10 plus b. Well, negative 1 times 10 is negative 10. So I have negative 2 equals negative 10 plus b. Go ahead and add 10 to both sides, and when you do so, you get 8 equals b. So I need to have a function, a, an equation, that has a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of positive 8, and the only answer that has that is b. The next um, example says, what is the equation of a line that passes through the points in the table? Notice in this table, I'm given um, actually three ordered pairs here. 2, 5 would be an ordered pair, 3, 7 would be an ordered pair, and 4, 9 would be an ordered pair. The first thing I can do is go ahead and find the slope from the table. So find the pattern in your x's, which would be a, you're adding 1 each time, and the pattern in your y's, which is adding 2. Make sure you put the change in y over the change in x, so that, that would be 2 over 1 or just a positive 2 for a slope. Immediately, I can eliminate C and D. They both have slopes of um, 3 over 4, which is not the slope that I'm looking for. Now I'm going to use the same method that I used in the example above. I'm going to plug in 2 for M, and you can choose either um, any three of those ordered pairs. You can choose to plug in 2 for X and 5 for Y, 3 for X and 7 for Y, or 4 for x and 9 for y. I chose to go ahead and just plug in 2 for x and 5 for y. So I have 5 equals 2 times 2 plus b. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, so I have 5 equals 4 plus b. Go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides, and when you do so, you get b equals 1. So my answer here is b, y equals 2x plus 1. This example says, what is the equation of a line with a slope of 3 that passes through the x-axis at negative 1? If this line passes through the x-axis at negative 1, we know a point on the line is going to be negative 1, 0. They've already given me the slope, so I don't need to find the slope. I can just plug in 3 for b, so I can have y equals 3x plus b, and then I'm going to use the ordered pair that I can use based on the fact that the x-axis is at negative 1, I can plug in negative 1 for x and 0 for y. When I do that, I get 0 equals 3 times negative 1 plus b. 
3 times negative 1 is negative 3. I can add 3 to both sides and get 3 equals B. All of these answer choices, A, B, C, and D, all have a slope of 3, so I can't eliminate any based on that. But only D has a y-intercept at positive 3, so my answer is D. This next example says, what is the equation of a line that passes through the points negative 2, 4, and 3, negative 1? I'm going to again do the whole thing that I've already done a couple of times now. So go ahead and use the slope formula to find the slope. I plugged it in as 4 minus negative 1 equals negative 2 minus 3. Well, 4 minus negative 1 is a positive 5, and negative 2 minus 3 is a negative 5. Positive 5 divided by negative 5 is the same as a negative 1. I can go ahead and eliminate B and D because they both have slopes that are not negative 1. My next step is going to be to find the y-intercept. I'm going to do that by going ahead and plugging in my slope of negative 1. So I can say y equals negative 1x plus b. Now choose an ordered pair and plug in the x and y values from that ordered pair. I just chose to go with the first ordered pair that they gave me, so I plugged in 4 for y and negative 2 for x and got 4 equals negative 1 times negative 2 plus b. Well, negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2, so I have 4 equals 2 plus b. Go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides, and when you do so, you get 2 equals b. a and c are my only choices left, and a will, is going to be my answer because it is the one that has a y-intercept at positive 2. This next example says the population of a small town in 1990 was 1,200 people. The population in 2000 was 2,700 people. Let X represent the number of years since 1990. Let Y represent the population. Which linear equation represents this data? The first thing we need to do is figure out how much it increased each year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the um, population in 2000, 2,700, and I'm going to subtract the initial population, 1,200, and I'm going to divide it by the year 2000 minus the year 1990, 1990, wow. Go ahead and subtract those, and you get 1,500 divided by 10. Well, 1,500 divided by 10 is 150. Um, I went ahead and I eliminated answer choices B and C because they have the initial population at 2,700, when in reality, the initial population was 1,200 people in 1990. So I already know that my answer is going to be A, based on the fact that my slope or my um, rate of change in population is 150 people per year, and I know that I'm starting in 1990, I had 1,200 people in that town. The next example says, what is the equation of a line with an x-intercept of 3 and a y-intercept of negative 6? Go ahead, and we know that if the x-intercept is 3, I'm going to have a point at 3, 0, and then if the y-intercept is negative 6, I'm going to have a point at 0, negative 6. To find the slope of this line, I can do 0 minus negative 6 over 3 minus 0, which gives me um, 6 over 3, which can be simplified to just 2. So I can go ahead and I can eliminate C and D. And this um, question goes ahead and it already tells me that the y-intercept is negative 6, so I know my answer choice is going to be B, which has a slope of 2, which I found by using the ordered pairs, and a y-intercept of negative 6, which it tells me outright in the question. This example says a furnace technician charges $20 per hour and a one-time service charge of $30. Which equation represents the total charge Y for working X hours? Um, a few important piece of, pieces of information to highlight is that they're going to charge $20 per hour. Anytime you see per, you know you're going to be multiplying. So $20 times X because um, that's how many X is representing how many hours they work. 
And then it's going to be a one-time service charge of $30, um, what, meaning that whatever we they charge us per hour, we just need to add 30 to that because they're going to charge us for um, just coming out to our location to help us. So the answer here is going to be A, Y equals 20X plus 30. The reason why B doesn't work is because it tells it's multiplying the number of hours that they're there by 30, which is the one-time service charge. That doesn't make sense. And then C and D are both incorrect because they have um, the number of hours being added or subtracted to the one-time service fee, and then they're multiplying that by the $20 per hour, and that's not correct either. The next example says the table shows the amount Donna charges Y for doing yard work. She charges a fixed fee plus an hourly rate. Which equation represents the amount Donna charges for working X hours? Um, we actually had a very similar problem about Donna's yard service earlier in this lesson. Um, the first thing we can figure out based on this table is that for each hour that she works, she's charging six more dollars. So we know that her hourly rate is going to be six dollars, which means she's going to multiply six times the number of hours that she works, which in turn already gives us our answer. The only one that um, uses six dollars per hour is D because X is the hour, number of hours that she works. So my best answer choice here is D, Y equals 6X plus 5. Um, if you wanted to just double check, which is always a good thing, you could plug in a couple of um, hours, hour values that you know. Like if I plugged in 3, I would do 6 times 3, which is 18, plus 5 is 23. And if you look at the table, when she works 3 hours, she does charge $23. This next example says the table shows how the length S of a spring changes when the weight W of the end of the spring is increased. We have the weight in pounds and the length of spring in inches, and it says which equation models this situation. Um, the easiest thing to do, especially when we have decimals and all that good stuff, not that it's too difficult, but the easiest thing to do is just to look at some of the ordered pairs or the um, pairs of numbers that they give us and go ahead and just plug them into the sum of the equations to see if we can figure this out fairly easily. Um, the first one that's going to be very nice to look at is the fact that when no weight, zero pounds, is on the spring, it's going to be four inches. Well, when you plug in zero for W, for A, you have 0 0.8 times zero is zero plus four is four. Um, so A would be a possible answer. B would also be a poss possible answer because when you plug in zero, you'd, you would do 1.6 times zero is zero and zero plus four is four. But when you look, get down to C and D, when you plug in zero um, to C, you would get 1.2, so that's not gonna be my answer. And when you plug in zero for W and D, you get 0.8, which is also not going to be my answer. Now, the next, relationship that I'm going to look at is this relationship of the fact that when one pound is on the spring, the spring is 5.6 inches long. When you plug in one to A, one times 0 0.8 is just 0 0.8. 0 0.8 plus four is 4.8, which is not 5.6 what we're looking for. So A is also out. And when you plug in one to B, 1 times 1.6 is 1.6, and 1.6 plus 4 is 5.6. So my answer here is B. This example says, what is the equation of this graphed function? The two things we need to find the equation of this graphed function is the y-intercept, which is right here at positive 1, which means I can eliminate B and D. And I also need the slope. To find the slope, I need to have two points on my graph, and I need to count the rise over run. So from this um, point, I would go up one and to the right three to get to the next whole number ordered pair, which means my slope is going to be one over three. Now, don't get thrown off when you look at your answer choices. Um, A says y equals x over three plus one. Well, dividing by three is the same thing as multiplying by one third. So my answer choice here is going to be A. Clearly my slope isn't three if it's one over three, so C wouldn't make sense. A is definitely my best choice here.